Today we are working on lesson 4-2, which is solving systems using substitution. We're just continuing um, the same concept, taking two equations and trying to find a solution that makes each equation true. Okay, and so um, this is just a second method. So the first method we used was we graphed the lines and wherever they intersected, that would tell what our solution is. This time though, we're going to use algebra, full-on algebra to figure out solutions to two equations. The very first page of our notes is just one problem and I've broken it out step by step. When you're doing your homework, if you follow this first page going through step by step and, work, and working out your homework problems with this first page, you should be able to do just fine. The rest of the notes though are going to be practicing solving using substitution, okay? So the method behind substitution is you isolate a variable and then you take the expression that that variable equals and you plug it into the second equation and you're basically substituting it for a variable. And I know that just saying that is kind of confusing. So as we go through the notes, I'll continue to explain and you'll be able to see what I mean. So we are starting off with these first two equations, 2x plus y equals negative 4, 5x minus 2y equals negative 1. And the very first step here tells us that we need to take one of those equations and rearrange it and set it equal to either x or y. For this example, I'm going to take equation 1 and I'm going to set it equal to y. Okay? So the way that I, I do this is I look at both of my equations and I try to find an equation where one of my variables is already by itself or it has a coefficient of one. And anytime it has a coefficient of one, it's by itself. That's because we don't see a number in front of it. In this equation, I could see here that the y has a coefficient of one. We just don't see it, but it's there. So it's by itself. So I'm gonna take this equation and I'm going to rearrange it by isolating the y. Now, I know that some of you are still struggling with this concept. However, by this time, you need to be comfortable with rearranging your equations. Otherwise, it's going to get very, very complicated, okay? So I'm going to write 2x plus y equals negative 4. And I'm going to rearrange my equation so that y is by itself on the left side. That means that I need to get rid of this 2x. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. So I've gotten rid of it on the left and I'm left with y equals negative 2x minus four. And I just completed step one by taking one of the equations and isolating one of the variables. And it doesn't matter if I isolate the y or the x, it just so happens in this equation that y is already by itself. So that one was the easiest one to work with, okay? Step one done. We are now going to go to step two. Substitute the equation you solved for in step one, this right here, into the other equation, which is equation two up here. In this example, I will substitute negative 2x minus four into the second equation for y. And let me explain to you why I'm doing this. This, by isolating the y in our first step, we have said that y equals negative 2x minus 4. That means that that's what y is. y is negative 2x minus 4. So if that's what y equals, then I can plug it into this equation up here for y. And now all I have are my x's in the equation, and I could solve for x. So let's see what that looks like. I'm going to take my second equation and write it out. 5x minus 2y equals negative 1. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this expression right here, negative 2x minus 4, and put it into the equation for y. So basically what I'm doing is I'm getting rid of y, and I'm replacing it with negative 2x minus 4, or substituting it. And that's where we get the name for this uh, method. So what that's going to look like is 5x minus 2. Now remember, we're replacing the y with this expression here, and I write it in parentheses. Negative 2x minus 4. 
okay? So I've taken what y equals from the first step. I plugged it into where y is in the second equation. So now if you look at our equation, all we have are x's. So we can easily solve this equation and figure out what the x part of the ordered pair is, what the x part of the solution to our system is. So this is the second step. Now I'm gonna go down to the third step, okay? Now solve the equation you generated in step two. We're gonna solve this equation right here for the given variable. The given variable is X because it's the only variable left in our equation. In this case, I will simplify the equation to determine the value of, change this Y to an X, please. Okay. So I am going to rewrite this equation. And I'm going to start solving it. Now we're going back to the very first unit of our book where we had to solve lots and lots and lots of equations. This is a multi-step equation. So the first thing that I'm going to want to do is distribute my negative two to both terms inside of the parentheses. Okay. So stop me if you have a question or you need to process. Negative 2 times negative 2x is a positive 4x. And negative 2 times a negative 4 is a positive 8. Okay. So we distributed first. Now I'm going to combine like terms. So you'll notice that 5x plus 4x are like terms because they both have the variable x and I can combine them together. 5x plus 4x is 9x. Now I got need to get to the point where I'm isolating my X right here by doing inverse operations. So I need to get rid of my eight. So I'm going to subtract by doing the inverse of addition. And I'm subtracting eight from both sides. And I end up with nine X equals negative nine. I continue to try to isolate my X by doing the inverse operation. 9 times x, I have to do the inverse of that, and that means I'm going to divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by a 9. And my answer, x equals negative 1. So this is the half of our answer so far. Remember, when we're solving for systems of equations, our goal is to get the ordered pair at which they would intersect on a graph, or the ordered pair that would make each of the equation's true. In this case, we found the first half of that ordered pair, the x. Now we need to find the y. So in step four, it says take the value of the variable you solved for in step three, that's the x, and plug it into one of the equations you started with at the top. Then solve for the other variable. So we're going to end up solving for y. In this case, we will take negative one and plug it into the first equation for x to determine the value of y, okay? So I'm gonna kind of start over with step four a little bit. We found the value of x. In order to now find the value of y, I'm gonna plug negative one into one of these equations, wherever x is, and then solve for y. How do I determine which equation to use? It doesn't matter. I can pick any equation I want and plug my negative one into it. I tend to look at the equations with the smallest numbers or the easiest to solve. In this case, I chose equation one because it's, it just looks easier to deal with, okay? So let's write equation one down here, 2x. Okay. Plus y equals negative four. And since we already have the value of x, I'm just going to substitute negative one where the x is. And we have two times a negative one plus y equals negative four. And now I can solve for y. Two times negative one is negative two. And then I add two to both sides. And y equals negative two. And so I found the second half of the ordered pair. 
So step five, we're going to write out the solution in this system of equation as an ordered pair. Remember, x always goes first. So our solution is negative one, negative two. Now, at some point, you might say, oh, I don't know if this solution is correct. So before you turn to the next page, we're going to go back up to the top and we're going to check. I'm going to show you how to check your work to see if it's right. OK, so I have the solution negative one, negative two. So up here, we're going to check our work. OK, where X equals negative one and Y equals negative two. And the way that you do this is you just plug those numbers into each of the equations. So on the left side, I'm gonna write our first equation, 2x plus y equals negative four. And then I'm gonna write 5x minus 2y equals negative one. So I take negative one and plug it into the x. So two times negative one, and then negative two and plug it into where the y is. So instead of a plus, it's going to be a minus two. Okay. And then I solve. Two times negative one is negative two. And then two minus two is a negative four. Okay, and then you can see that your left side is equal to your right side, so that checks out. The problem is that sometimes someone will just check it with one equation and it's true but it may not always be true for the second equation. So we need to check it with both equations. So we're gonna do the same thing for the second one. We're gonna plug negative one into where the X is and negative two into where the Y is. And we're going to solve. And it is true because the left side equals the right side. It's the same number. And so this is how you would check, okay? So let's go to page two. All right, on page two, just so you don't have to go back and forth from the front to the back, I put the steps up here on how to solve these. Um, so for example two, it says solve one of the equations for X or Y. This means you need to rearrange one of the equations to be set to X or Y. You're going to notice that in both of these equations, they're both already set equal to Y. So we can skip that step, okay? Um, and for the next three, they're already set equal to X or Y. So we can eliminate that first step for those. Uh, but don't forget that, it, that that is step number one. Okay, so if you set the equation equal to Y, then plug the expression into the second equation and solve for X. And that's what's happened here. This equation is set equal to Y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 5X plus seven, and since that's what Y equals, I'm going to plug it into the equation here for y. Or I could have done it the other way. It doesn't matter. Okay. So if I plug 5x plus 7 into this equation, I have 5x plus 7 equals 2x minus 5. What variable are we solving for now? X, because it's the only one there. We're going to solve for x. Okay, so I would like everyone to go ahead and solve for X right now. Okay, when you are finished, check your answer, but please try to solve it on your own first. Okay, once you get your value for X, you then need to find Y. So you're going to take this negative four and you're gonna plug it into one of the equations. It does not matter which equation you choose. You can pick any equation you want. 
I tend to choose the equation that looks easiest to solve. Really, either one of them would work. Okay, so I'll just choose this first equation. And I'm going to write it out, y equals 2x minus 5. And I'm going to plug or substitute negative 4 in for x. And go ahead and solve for y. Okay, and when you're done, check your answer. Hold on, just one second. And then the way that you would write your answer is negative four, negative 13 as an ordered pair. You do all of this work just to get to this one small answer. Okay, and just to let you know, if I would have chosen this equation, y equals 5x plus 7 and substituted negative 4, I would have still gotten negative 13. So it really it does not matter which equation you choose. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to example three. We're going to follow the first step again, solve one of the equations for x or y. And so this means you need to rearrange it so that one of your variables is isolated. Now, in this case, we already have a variable that is isolated, the x. So all we're going to do is we're going to take negative 2y plus 11. And instead of substituting for y, we're going to substitute for x. So keep in mind that it doesn't matter which variable you isolate, the x or the y. Okay, you can isolate either one of those, whichever one's easiest. So I'm going to plug this then into the next equation for x. So what this would look like is 12 times negative 2y plus 11 minus 6y equals 12. And I'm going to solve this equation now for y first. Okay, so I want everyone to go ahead and do that. Okay, so once you solve, you should get y equals negative 4. I mean, not negative 4, positive 4, sorry. And so now I am going to choose an equation. I'm going to choose this second one. It just looks easier to solve. And I am going to plug or substitute 4 in for my y. Okay. okay. And you should be able to solve that without me. And then don't look up here until you're done because you want to make sure you understand how to do this. Okay, so when you're done, check your answer. And don't put your four first. Remember, an ordered pair, X comes first. Okay. Example four. Now, on example four, this one is already set equal to Y. Okay, I want you, and, and since what we're going to do is we're going to take this negative 3x plus 1 and we're going to plug it into this equation for y, imagine that there's a 1 in front of the y, okay, and you're going to put your parentheses after that 1. Now, I'm going to just tell you up front, you don't have to do that. That's just for students who have a hard time figuring out how to place it in there, okay? So if you did use the 1, it would be negative 5x plus 1, and then parentheses negative 3x plus 1 equals negative 7. Now, you don't have to do that. You could just plug it in and put negative 5x minus 3x plus 1 equals negative 7. Okay. And so then go ahead and continue solving this one. Okay, so this is x, x equals one. And then I'm gonna use this equation, y equals negative three x plus one and substitute one in where x is. You can use the other equation though. Okay. Okay, 
and then you write this as an ordered pair. All right. Okay, so for example five, we do not have an equation that is already set equal to a variable. So in looking at these two equations, which equation would you use and which variable would you isolate and tell me why somebody look which equation would you use the first or the second and then whichever one you choose which variable would you isolate and why aj go ahead you don't understand it i chose the uh why why would you choose the first one Bashan? because the y is by itself so what i want everyone to do is to rearrange the first equation set it equal to y and then plug it into the second equation and then you're going to check that with me before you move on so i want everybody to do that first unless you already have the hang of this and you can you can move on okay so yeah okay so once you isolate the y and plug it in, this is what your equation should look like once you have plugged that in. Hold on. Okay. So now what I want you to do is solve this for x and then figure out y. So everybody should be working to solve this entire problem. Okay, this is what you should have gotten for y. I mean five, not y. <laughs> Yes. And then again, zero plus x in both fraction. Yes. So I'm going to do that one with you. So check it to see. Okay, we're going to move on to example six. Example six does involve fractions. So we're going to work this out together. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay, so with example six, you have to be very careful about what variable you isolate. I could already tell by looking at these numbers, because none of these are divisible by each other, nor over here, that I'm going to have fractions. So I'm going to want to choose an equation that has the lower numbers. Um, and so I am going to choose this equation and I'm gonna solve for X so that my denominator is two because that tends to be the easier numbers to work with. And then I can also see, and the more you practice, the more you'll be able to see this, is that if my denominator is two when I solve for X and plug it in here, it's divisible by four. So I will eventually get rid of those fractions, okay? so. Our first step is to take this second equation and set it equal to x. So we're going to isolate the x. So we're going to add 3y to both sides. Okay. And you end up with 2x equals 3y minus 11. And my x is not isolated yet. I still have to get rid of that 2. So I'm going to divide everything by 2. So x equals 3 halves y minus 11 halves. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this here and I am going to plug it in to this equation right here for x, okay? And it is going to take some fraction work. So we have four times three halves y minus 11 halves plus seven y equals 43. Okay. Yes, Jane. Uh, what if it did uh, minus two x instead of plus three y? 
You can still do it. It's just going to be a lot more difficult. I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So notice here that when I multiply by my fractions, 4 times 3 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So I've gotten rid of my fractions by doing it this way. So I have 6y. 4 times negative 11 is a negative 44. Negative 44 divided by 2 is a negative 22. So minus 22. Oh, what? I've never seen anybody do it that way. 7, so 1. Like you could cross simplify too. And I'm never going to yes. remember how you did that. Uh, for your next step, would you minus 6y? Nope. Right. So for my next step, I'm going to combine like terms. So I have 6y plus 7y. Which. Okay, hold on. I want everybody to catch up. So please process what we're doing so that you can hopefully be able to solve problems like this. Okay. Now, what am I going to do? Yep. And now what am I going to do? And 65 is divisible by 13. Y equals 5. Okay, now I want you to solve for X. Go ahead. So this is what you got should have gotten, for example, 11. And now what we're going to do, okay, quiet up. We are going, did I, what did I say? 11. Oh, I meant, I was, anyway, example six. We're now going to move into word problems. And with the word problems, you're pulling two equations out of the word problems so that you can solve them just like what we did. All right, so here we go. A snack bar sells two sizes of snack packs. A large snack pack is five and a small pack, snack pack is $3. In one day, the snack bar sold 60 snack packs for a total of $220. How many large and small, small snack packs did the snack bar sell? It's that's, like, that's it's like she sells, she sells by the seashore. Yeah, that is the tongue twister. So we have to figure out what are the two ideas here that we're comparing, okay? Shh. One is that we're comparing the number of snacks sold and we're also comparing the cost okay so when we pull out our two equations we're going to pull out one equation that's going to represent the total cost and one equation that represents the total number of snacks sold so let's Let's look at the cost first, because sometimes that's the easier one to find. Based on the fact that a large snack pack is $5, and we're going to label that equation G, and then a small snack pack is $3, we're going to label that one M, oops, sorry, G and M. And we know that the large costs five and the small costs three, and they sold a total of $220. How would we write that in an equation? No, nope, not an inequality because they sold to they sold exactly two hundred twenty dollars. Oh. Uh, yes. So we're gonna write it like this: five G plus three M equals a total of two hundred and twenty. And this is all based on the price. So. Each large snack is $5, each small snack is $3, and they sold a total of $220. But now we have to go over to the number. Now they tell us that they sold 60 packs, okay? So how would we come up with an equation like this? This one's a little bit different. Same, it's still gonna be in standard form, but anyone have an idea? AJ? Oh my goodness. Sure. How could you? G plus M equals 60. Yeah. 
Okay. D plus M equals 60. There you go. Good job, okay. So we're going to follow the rules of substitution from page one to answer the question from the problem. How many large and small snack packs did the snack bar sell? So we're going to just solve this using substitution. So let's go ahead and isolate the G from this equation, then plug it into the second equation and we're going to solve for M and then plug that into one of the equations to solve for G. Okay. So Let's isolate this equation here for G. So we have G plus M equals 10. So we're gonna subtract M from both sides and we had G equals, oh, it is 60, I'm sorry, thank you. 10, 10. Okay, so G equals negative M plus 60. Okay, now I'm going to write the second equation out. And I am going to substitute what G is into the equation here for G. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to solve this. Okay, when you're finished or if you're needing help, go ahead and look up here and see what you did. Okay. Are there any questions about that first part? Christian? Yeah, so I got the negative five and plus three hundred, right? That I just did not add plus three. Okay, so once I figure out M, I'm gonna use this little equation here, G plus M equals 60, and just figure out how many of the large snack packs. And you guys can do this part in your head, but I still want you to show your work. That's right, there isn't any. Which one's the X one? It doesn't matter in this case. We're just trying to figure out how many large and how many small snack packs they sell. So, all right. And so then I just put large equals 20 and small equals 40. And in a real world situation like this, you are not going to write it as an ordered pair. You will actually write it out like this. Okay. Example eight on the back, you paid $22 to rent six video games. The store charges four for new games and two for old games. How many old and new games did you buy? Okay, so we're gonna use N for new and we're gonna use D for old. Um, not O because that looks like a zero. Now we need two equations. So the two ideas that we're pulling out of this problem is the cost and the number of games. This is very similar to the previous one we did. So we need those two equations. So I want you to take a minute to try to think of what those two equations will be. And then I'm going to ask for your help. Okay, I need a volunteer to tell me one of the equations. Yes, Jaden, go ahead. Four n plus two d equals twenty-two. I'm sorry, I was distracted. What? Four n plus two d equals twenty-two. Yes, four n plus two d equals twenty-two. So this was based on the cost of the games. Okay, somebody tell me the other one. The other equation. N plus D equals six. Good. Oh, yeah, I was looking for that, but I, for some reason I couldn't find the set. Okay. Let's agree on which equation we're going to use and which variable we're going to isolate, and then you're going to do this one on your own. AJ. Okay, so you're going to use the second equation, and which variable do you want to isolate first? D. You're going to isolate D. So everybody work on that equation. Isolate D. I want you to try this one completely on your own. Okay, so when you plug it in, you should get this equation. And this is where a lot of you are 
getting a little bit confused. I did see one error happen more than once. Instead of plugging this expression into where D was, they plugged it into where N is. Make sure you're plugging it into the right variable, okay? Then you have 4N minus 2N plus 12 equals 22. And the slightest um, calculation error will change the whole thing. A lot of you, when you subtracted 12 from both sides, got 12. But 22 minus 12 is 10. I know. It... Okay. Yes. So then once you get five, you should easily figure out what D is. You really don't. What's D one? Yep. Okay. So new games. They bought five of, and they bought one old game. Yes, you can do that in your head. You are correct. A lot of you would be able to do that. But then when you get down to more complicated problems, you can't do it. So the process is important. Okay. He took almost one hour. Yeah. Okay. Let's look at example nine because our time is running low. Um, okay, no, I'm going to do number nine. Listen, 10, but we're going to do, we're going to do both of these. Okay, the difference in the side length of two squares is 10, and we're talking about the difference. And then the sum is 18. So you're going to subtract two, and then you're going to add two. So if you think of two squares, the side lengths are all the same. So let's make square one the x and square two the y. So it's saying that the difference between these two is going to be 10. So that would be x minus y equals 10. But the sum of these two is 18. So x plus y equals 18, okay? Now, we are going to, I'm going to give you this one because we are running out of time. We are going to isolate the x in this one by adding y to both sides. And then we are going to plug it into the equation over here. So let's go ahead and work on that. So we're going to take this x and we're going to plug it into the equation here. And when we do, we have y plus 10 plus y equals 18. Okay, so I want you to solve for y and then finish solving, solving for x. Okay. So um, this is how I would write my answer for this problem. Square one, which represents X is 14 and square two, which represents Y is four. Okay, we're gonna move down to the very last problem. And the equations are actually set up for you in this problem. Suppose you got six mangoes and three apples for $24 and then four mangoes and five apples for $28. How much does each mango and each apple cost? We're going to write a system of equations to solve this. Hold on just a second. Okay, so in this problem, we are going to use M for mangoes and A for apples. So our first equation is going to be 6M plus 3a equals 24. And our second equation is going to be 4m plus 5a equals 28. 
Now, the way that I look at these equations and what goes through my mind when I'm trying to figure out what variable I'm going to solve for is which equation is not going to give me fractions. Well, when I look at the second equation, five is not divisible by four, four is not divisible by five. And so I know I'm going to end up with fractions at this point. So then I look at the second one and I know that six is divisible by three and 24 is divisible by three evenly. So that means I'm going to isolate my A so that I end up with whole numbers and not fractions. So I want everybody to, we're gonna do this one together. We are going to isolate A. So we have to first subtract 6M from both sides. Three A equals negative six M plus 24. And then we can divide everything by three. Oh, yeah. Math is cool, kids. Stay in drugs. Stay in school and don't be. Oh, I just ordered. Yes, I am actually. Thank you for that. Okay. So we're going to take what A equals and we are going to plug it into this equation right here where A is. So let's rewrite this, 4m plus 5 times negative 2m plus 8. If at this point you have two different variables in your equation, something went wrong. You plugged it in incorrectly because you should be down to just one variable that you're solving for. Okay, so then I'm going to distribute my 5. Okay, then I'm going to combine like terms. So I'm going to combine 4m minus 6m and I get negative 6m. Then I subtract 40 from both sides. Also, if you're dealing with cost and you end up with a negative number, you did something wrong. Okay, negative 6m equals <laughs> negative 12. If your final number. Yeah, if your final number. And then M equals two. So we sold two mangoes. Wow, how old is it? Only two. Wait, no, no, that's worth, how mangoes are worth two dollars. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Mangoes are worth two dollars. And my other class said I should have switched my mango and my apple numbers because the apples are going to end up being more. So, no, two dollars per man mango. So now I'm going to use this equation here. Six M plus three A equals 24. And I'm going to substitute to where the M is. Shh. Quiet, please. Okay. And apples cost four dollars each. So when we write our answer, I'll write mangoes two dollars and apples. Four dollars. This isn't realistic, but it is how you get the answer. They're golden plated, organic. <laughs> okay, and that concludes lesson four two.